Assalamu alaikum. This is the course of microeconomic theory advanced approach directed to fourth year economics section. Let us solve some applications relating to the equilibrium in the classical labor market. First, if you are given the following production function and the labor supply function, the required is to derive the labor demand function by two ways. Number two, determine the equilibrium real wages. Third, determine the size of equilibrium labor and the full employment level of output. And finally, show your answer graphically. First of all, the demand for labor function could be derived by two ways. First one, when the marginal productivity of, wage, of labor equals real wages. As we know that a perfect competitive firm is aiming at maximizing its profit and it will continue hiring more labor as long as the marginal productivity of labor is positive. And uh, in order to maximize its profit, the marginal productivity of labor should equal the real wage rate. How to get the marginal productivity of labor is by uh, differentiating the output function with respect to labor. By getting the first derivative of production function with respect to labor, it's equal 100 minus 0.02L uh, equated with the real wages and divided this equation by 0.02, we got the labor demand function. Labor demand function is downward sloping, indicating a negative relationship between real wages and the amount of labor employed or demanded by the firm. That's why it has negative slope. The slope of this function equals minus 50. Another way to derive the demand function for labor uh, is getting by profit function. We know that the profits equal total revenue minus total cost. And in order to get the number of labor that maximize the profit of the firm, is getting by the first derivative of profit function with respect to labor. So in order to get the number of labor that maximize the, prop uh, the profit of the firm, we have to differentiate the profit function of the firm with respect to labor and equate this to the zero. By doing so, we will get the demand function for labor. Our second required point is to determine the equilibrium real wage level. We know that the equilibrium real wage level occurred in the classical labor market when we equate the labor demand functions with labor supply function. By equating the labor demand function with labor supply, we get the real wage rate in the classical labor market, which is $20. Next, in order to get the optimal size of employment, we have to substitute the equilibrium real wages either into the supply function of labor or the labor demand function. Thereby, we get the equilibrium or the optimal size of employment, which is 4,000 working hours. And to get the optimal size of output, we call it the full employment level of output, we have to substitute the optimal size of labor, which is 4,000 working hours, into the output function. By substituting the 4,000 
in the output function, we got the full employment level of output. Now, in order to show our answer graphically, we start uh, graphing the uh, equilibrium uh, labor market or the equilibrium position in labor market. We know that for classics, we cannot determine the level of production first. We have to analyze the labor market because market forces, which is the labor demand and labor supply, will determine the level of free wages, which determine the amount or, or the optimal size of labor which is desired to be employed and this optimal size of labor which is for thousands working hours would set the full employment level of output. We have to remember that the equilibrium in labor market occurs independent of all other markets whereas it affects the equilibrium of other markets. Also, we have to remember that the starting point in the classical model is the labor market equilibrium. After determining the equilibrium real wage rates, this equilibrium real wage rates would determine the optimal size of labor that is desired to be employed by the firms and this optimal size of labor would determine the full employment level of output. That's why aggregate supply function for classic model is vertical because there is no either resources thereby we produce the full employment level of output. Second, suppose you had the following information. It gives me a table uh, showing a number of labor, amount of output produced, and the marginal productivity of labor. And supposing that the price level of final products is equal to, uh, the required is uh, how many workers would be hired in order to maximize firm profit. If the money wages is 16, and in other time it could be $10. In order to get the required number of uh, labor that is demanded by the firm to be hired, we have to remember that uh, for classics, um, the competitive firm is aiming at maximizing its profit and it will continue hiring more labor as long as the marginal productivity of labor is positive, but uh, in order to maximize its profit, the marginal cost of hiring more labor should equal the marginal revenue for hiring that number of labor. This can be shown uh, by uh, equating the real wages with marginal productivity of labor or the money wages with the value of marginal product of labor. These questions give me the price of final uh, goods and services, give me uh, the first wage rate, which is 16, and second wage rate, which is 10. So we will multiply the price with the marginal product, which are given numbers in this problem, and we get the marginal productivity of labor times the price it's equal the value of marginal productivity so we have to search what is uh, the number of labor at which the marginal productivity of the value of marginal productivity of labor equals the nominal wages at 16 we find that the optimal size of labor demand when the money wages equal 16 is the 3 and when the money wages decreases to 10 the optimal size of employment would be 4. We have also to remember that the demand curve for labor is either reflect 
the value of marginal product of labor or the marginal productivity of labor.